Okay, step 16 in the Melisma course, and I've given you a lot of information now. We've been talking about rhythms, we've been talking about pentatonic scale patterns, talking about putting them together in different ways, and this is a continuation of sharing with you how I internalize this in a regular way. So I do all kinds of vocal warm-ups, uh, but all of them are really short. And uh, if you've seen other lessons and other courses that I've taught, then you understand, and I'm assuming everybody who is involved in this course, especially by now, uh, understands how to go through their chest, their mix, and their head, and so forth. And that's what I do all the time. I always do quick little exercises like sirens and lip rolls and tongue trills and with various vowel sounds. That's another lesson. But I use that and I warm up and then I take pentatonic scale patterns. I'm going to start with a major pentatonic scale pattern. And I don't go completely through it. I go up a few notes. I go down a few notes. I start to move it around in various ways and I'll show you some of these ways. So if I, if I just do this and we don't even think about the rhythm for the moment. We know that we can put rhythm to it and we can put triplets and sixteenth notes and all that stuff. But let's not talk about that for a moment. I'm not going to talk about that for a moment. But I'm just going to take a major pentatonic scale pattern. Up and back, right? I'll just take, I'll pick a vowel sound. Hey, hey, and maybe up a half a step. Hey, again. Hey, and maybe some, hey, down a half a step. down a little bit, working my voice, building this into my muscle memory and doing it so much that it's easy. Then starts following some of the typical patterns in music. Typical patterns in music. What does that mean? So one of the typical movement patterns in music is called a cycle of fours. And again, without getting heavy into the theory of all of that, that's for another class. A cycle of fours is just notes moving around a fourth away from each other. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, which is actually C, C, pardon me, C flat, which is actually P, uh, B, E, A, D, G, back to C. So that's a cycle of fours, and music does that a lot. You can do it in major chords and minor chords, and combinations of major and minor chords, all kinds of different ways. Musicians know about this. So if I know, hey, 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 the idea I'm just following a cycle of fours. I can do it on my guitar, I can do it on the keyboard. Again, these things are easy to do if you just do them as part of your warm-up. Don't make a big deal out of them. But you do have to do things like this to incorporate it into your muscle memory. Another thought with these uh, patterns is don't just do them in one octave. I do a lot, I do a lot of them in one octave that way because I go from root to root, it's easy to hear the patterns moving around. But maybe I want to do something, start real low down in the mud there. So you start to do two octaves, three octaves, move through your chest mix and head. Go way up in your head voice, come down into your mix, down into your chest voice. Everything, any way that you can start to think about this again. Now we're at this point, I've showed you all these ways of developing it. Now I want you to think of ways of just pitting it through your range and being creative with it, of course. Now I always tell my students, 
you know, I'm because I'm working with students, one student after another, half an hour, half a, half an hour, day after day, week after week, month after month. I'm doing these types of things with my students all the time. So I got something out of this that maybe the average person wouldn't do. But you're not going to be an average person. You're going to do it. And if you do it, you're going to find out what I found out. I found out by teaching and practicing this so much that it did get really easy to hear all of this inside of my head. Because I've met so many musicians that say, ah, uh, I, don't do, I don't do any of that stuff, you know. I don't know, I just listen and I go with my heart and I go with my gut and whatever it is, my imagination will lead me into, that's what I do. And I've met some fantastic, amazing musicians who say something on the lines of that. And that's okay. When you get to a certain point, I can sort of say that too when I'm improvising or when I'm walking up into a bandstand and singing in a situation that I don't normally sing in. I kind of go for it and whatever happens, happens. But I've also practiced these patterns so much that this just becomes something in my toolbox that I can pull out really quick and use it in a lot of creative ways. And I was just singing a major pentatonic up and down, but we already know that I don't have to go, hey, good. hey, hey, by putting a triplet in there and a, a 16th notes and all of the things we've already talked about. But I've got the pattern so strong in my mind and the sound so strong in my mind that uh, it's just easy to call from there. It's just the same thing that you've done as a guitar player or as a keyboard player if you play those instruments or any other musical instrument. If you played it long enough, you've learned scales and patterns and then you invent out of them. Hey, it's the same thing for a vocalist if a vocalist will think that way. 